Well, good morning. Nah, it's not morning. It's really late at night. I'm Max Stevens. I buy old records. I'm on my way to go pick up an insanely rare Sun record. So the lovely Carrie Rebel and my sidekick Jesse, we're all going, uh, well, we're going out to Knoxville, Tennessee. Yeah, it's only, I don't know, 12 hours from our house, give or take. I'm sure it's going to take a lot. But I got this record uh, paid for. I'm just going to run out there and pick it up. They've got more records for me to look at. And I got several people to talk to. Yada, yada, yada. Coming back, hopefully, with a bunch of good records. So y'all go with me. I'm glad I'm back on the road again. And uh, hang about. We'll see ya. Next morning. I'm in love's truck stop. Morning came way too early. I got three and a half, four hours of sleep. Now we're gonna make time. All the way out to Knoxville. All right, Memphis has hove into view. Goodness gracious, look at that. There's Mississippi River, big river. Got Jimmy D. Berry playing in the background. There. Wow. Well, all right. I'm about, oh, I don't know, six or seven minutes from our first stop of the trip. We're only 869.9 miles into the uh, into it all, so we're, we're at about 125. Well, no, 1,250 kilometers into it for you proper measuring people. So uh, I'm gonna stop. Uh, I don't know if I'll film inside their house or anything like that, but I'm here to pick up a really good Sun record that I need for my collection. And uh, just saw a good flea market back there. Going to go hit it, hopefully, if time permits. Going to look through some other records these fine folks have. Maybe they've got another one for me. Ha <laughs> Wish me luck. Well, beloved, it did well. In just a little bit, I didn't want to film while I was handling the Raymond Hill record. Oh yeah, Sun 204, Raymond Hill. Exceedingly rare, and uh, it's in better shape than what was advertised. I'm very happy with that. These were not record people. These are a lot of old stock records that had belonged to uh, the lady's dad. And in the past, she had had a couple of the Elvis sons, sold those real well years ago held on to the rest, and this was the only son that was in there. Now that is strange how this ended up in a pile of a little bit of rockabilly, a whole lot of country boogie and hillbilly. So, and, and all the stuff that I bought is pretty much unplayed condition. So I paid real well for it. I don't mind if I can double my money or a little bit better, I'm more than happy. Anyway, let's go find some more records. And now I've got to head down to Chattanooga and look at some more stuff. It's only 90 minutes away, I think. Okay, this is why I drove 800 and something miles. Raymond Hill, The Snuggle. Push marks, absolutely a real copy. Really gorgeous, it's got one scuff there that's not feelable. The other side is a beautiful mint minus. It is gorgeous, it's in better shape than uh, I've ever could have imagined. Usually when non-record people sell records, they don't work out that well. Shoot. So I also bought a stack of, oh, I don't know, 40 or 50 uh, really good country and uh, R&B. I think there's a bopper, a, a bunch of boppers in here. Just all sorts of neat stuff. I bought a whole stack of Abbott records. That's just unreal. Alexander's gonna like to see that. Just bunches of them. In fact, Maybe he'll actually need one or two of those. I don't know. Who knows or, or dares to dream. Anyway, well, I'm gonna put other records in here with it, and then we're gonna hit the road. 
Well, all right, getting closer and closer to a second stop for the evening. Unexpectedly, we're running way ahead of schedule. So, we're gonna stop at another place up here, take a look at some records for a bit. Might take an hour, hopefully not that long, but maybe I'll find some uh, stuff and uh, then we'll head on down the road, find a motel, sleep the sleep of the uh, dead, and then uh, new day tomorrow. Yeah. What I'm picking up thus far, I think I forgot to turn the camera on earlier. Comer Money, Del Rios, Lonnie Smith, old Junior Thompson, Danny Wolf, Let's Flat Get It, uh, Spitfire, Harold and Bob, Marlon Grisham, Teenage Love. It's not his rocker, but it's a good teener. But I got to play a couple, see what they are. Oh, and that's a 78, and that ain't gonna work. But just the same, I went on. All right, good. Good Billy Bopper. I wish tomorrow. Make me love me. I'm undecided on that one. And I think, yeah, I want that one, I think. I've got a just a beat up copy of this one at the house. So that will play much better. Uh. I'm going down to the hospital, to the break of day. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sucker for that. I don't even want to look that one up or anything. That is just too cool. Oh, it's from Nashville. Neat. Yeah, I, I was going through them earlier today, and one of mine, it was on a Hillbilly Billy series. Oh, no. I to crack all the way through. So. And the rule of thumb is, the, the rarer the record, oh, yeah. the more apt it's going to crack. That was the one. Oh, yeah. In fact, the last place I went today, uh, I had a good pile of records about 50 of them or so other ones i'd bought and then huh, i got out to the car loaded them all up got about 50 miles away and realized i didn't see that one that i really wanted so i called and they're just going to mail it to me because they had already left the house bill mack he died recently Yeah, from here I've got to run up towards uh, where uh, 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 we're in the Jackson area, but it's north of Jackson a bit. So I'll get a room between here and there, and in the morning go there. And James Harlan Reed, we'll see who he is. Let's see what the Surratt looks like. I had a guy mail me one of these one time in a LP mailer and it arrived unbroken. That scared me to no, to no end. Make sure there's no internal cracks. It's getting harder for me to, to, to find. What would your uh, price be on this one? Yeah, uh, I was thinking on that with the condition mm -hmm. of it. $100. I can do that. I can do it. What I found recently, I found a, a copy of this and the Earl Peterson together recently in some old radio station records. And then about a month later, a guy had found the 8x10 cardboard or cardstock sun promo pictures with a biography on the back of Howard and uh, Earl Peterson. They only made two or three of those things, and they are very, very rare. Yeah, I've caught up with watching almost all of your episodes after I discovered your Ma blog about... Masochist. <laughs> yeah. I've been binge watching. <laughs> oh, do a very, very quick play. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the fastest there is, even in my energy drink stupor that I'm in right now. And coffee. Okay, 60s or 70s, 60s country, I would think. Yeah, Nashville, I'm going to put that one back, though. So I know Howard will play beautifully. It's hard for these not to play beautifully. And on that old Caliphone turntable I've got, ooh, those things 
or loud. Oh, well. I never paid attention to Gospel 45s until I started watching your blog. Uh, There's some good ones. I picked up a couple recently. Um, yeah. Look for the Sunshine label out of Oklahoma City. Blue with uh, silver print on, let's see, on 45. They're usually extended plays. Or red with silver print on 78 extended plays. They've got the hottest rockabilly type guitar you'll ever hear. Oh, so I've been pain free for about six, five or six days now. It's it went back into place, and they told me no permanent damage, or at least as far as you know, having something that uh, that just tore up or anything. I really appreciate you letting me come by because uh, I, I wanted to make it happen. If there's any way to, man, I, I thank you. I thought this would be a good thing for both of us it's fun i've had to curtail my record shows because of covid and yes i don't want to start again until i've gotten my shot well all right that was fun made a new friend there he's really cool i'll be you know checking back with him buying and such from him and i got some neat things there i'm really really proud of uh the uh Howard Surratt. I mean, I've already got it on 78. I've got a mint 45. But always pays to have a, a second 78. Probably I'll buy a third and a fourth. Maybe by the time this uh, trip is finished. We're enjoying, but we're done for the day with that. I've got to be merciful to my long suffering, and I emphasize the suffering family. We've been, well, we're at 992 miles for this trip, and now we're about to go up find us a motel in a little bit tomorrow i've got one record appointment and then after that we're going to tourist around just do whatever whatever we want because we're grown-ass people and do what we want uh yeah see you tomorrow yeah we're about to go on the road shut up shut your gobs well howdy there folks i'm max stevens i buy old records well it's the next day we slept really really well at wherever we are Murfreesboro, Tennessee. I don't know who Mr. Murphy was, but he has a lot of events going and it's a busy place. But we slept like dead people with clean consciences. Wanna to go to the next place? Gonna see old Mike Hooper. He's a legendary record picker. Gonna meet him, gonna look at stuff he's got. I'm just tickled. I haven't had my coffee yet and I'm this excited. I'll be there in an hour and 22 minutes. Then we're gonna do that. Then we're either gonna go over to Nashville, look around, or we might go to Memphis and see uh, some uh, sun-related stuff, you know, the museum and you know, maybe stacks records, just just stuff like that. Well, cool. We're off the interstate now. Going to go see Mr. Mike and uh, hopefully buy some good records. Heard good things about him from fairly good people. It sounds like he's probably better than the people that were telling me about him. So I'm looking forward to this. I like Tennessee. It's all hilly and pretty, and it's got trees, unlike the flatlands of Texas where I'm from. Uh, All right, we've made it to Mike's place. Going to look at records. What a shock. Man. <laughs> this is incredible. Wow. Oh, there's records. Yes. Okay. All right. You can sit on this thing here. Perfect. It's a little wobbly, but... Oh, that's okay. It's uneven, but it, it so am I. I'm uneven and wobbly. And I'm just too lazy to do it. I don't have PayPal. Which I think my wife's finally getting us hooked up on it. She's supposed to have this weekend because I've got an art show to do. Oh, art show. I see, I see your Picasso book over there. Oh, yeah. See, folks, we're not just about records. We're about fine art, too. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of painting. So. Really? And that pretty much pays my bills. Painting? Man. Yard sales. 
Well, antique store. I've got two booths in an antique mall. I saw the flea market down the road, that uh, down the street. That looked really nice. Yeah, I don't think he's open on Sunday. Though. Probably not. Uh, yeah, I figure today is not going to be a day for looking. No. Now, south of here is where it's Buford Pusser territory, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. good, good. <laughs> you won't go see him. Oh, my. I'd have to have a couple of flashlights and a shovel, but I, I probably <laughs> could, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, old. Uh, my next door neighbor when I lived in Corse County, Texas, was actually one of his descendants, Nathan Bedford, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Forrest. Yeah, he, he, that's, yeah, that's the guy. That's who I was thinking you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> because he's not far from here, neither, Pulaski. Oh, Pulaski where, County, yeah. Where he was, Spirit guess, Tone. Lived. Oh, yeah. I think before he died, he denounced the clan. These old acetates. I'll take a look at acetates any day. That, that looks nice. Thank yeah, they're so pretty much. deep, man. Couple boxes there. Howard, oh, looks like they're, yeah, yeah, privately made ones. I or, have no idea. I've got a couple of machines to record these, and when they work, they're great. Right now, they're not working. Man, it drives me nuts. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so these are. I'll have to play that one. That, yeah, that looks kind of interesting. I have no idea. There's. I think that box full, stacked there, and let me get a few more laying on there. So oh, okay, these it's are... It's been two years since anybody's gone through these records, so I've just been bringing them in and bringing them in. What I look for, and I haven't had a chance to oh, go through them and look them up or anything like that. I know there's a few in there that's got to be some good stuff. Yeah, some of these I play, they look like could be bopping country or something, you know. Uh, yeah, they, a lot of times they turn out to be shit. Hell, I had a, what was it, I thought was going to be a really good one. The rocking stockings or something. Oh, yeah, oh, that's awful. God, I played that, it just sucked. And, and do you know who that is? I have no clue. Billy Riley. Oh, was With it his really? band, yes. <laughs> it's like, no, it why? It was red, it had a red label. Oh, yeah. But man, it sucked. It was a Christmas stuff. I'm thinking, man, I got me a good one here. The rock in the stocking. Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> that, I've fallen for that one as well. That was the first one I've ever seen. Of course, I had to have it because that, you know, fills spot in the collection. Yeah. I don't... Let's see, I'll play these. Maybe a hundred records. Forty-five. That there were a hundred good ones. Yeah, well, I sold them all eBay, and at the end of, end of the month, it was $10,000. Shoot, <laughs> yeah. It to be a pretty good month. I think that's where <laughs> I, I might have met Pascal and a couple of the garage guys. Man. Some shit on Tampa, like Rolling Flames and yeah. Florida label. It's weird, the uh, stuff that just turns up from some other part of the country in one area where they shouldn't be. I like that. Well, all right, uh, just left Mr. Mike's. Of course, ran out of battery right before I started going through the 78. So I'll show you a little bit later what I've got 78 wise. Got a little handful of 45s and that was fun. Really neat, picturesque little Tennessee town. It's just, this is just cool. So right now we're Memphis bound. Why? We're going to go see Sun Records. Yeah, we are. Kind of sense a theme, don't you, about things that, that I like and what we do and such. Well, cool. I'm stopping in Jackson, Tennessee, home of Carl Perkins, but he's not home right now. I'm going to stop at a record store here, see what's shaking. Local label 45s like Lou. Do you know if we have any in the Yeah, Lou is, uh, I guess the one I'm looking for the most is Franklin Stewart. He was a local guy, and man, that that is the tough one. Yeah. And yeah. Curtis Hoback. I got he, you. He's another. 
is a oh that, yeah that's a memphis legend. it is it yeah. is and that's carl mcvoy well, let's see what the flip side is well that's the one of his i don't have i'll take that for sure cool. appreciate that yeah, yeah, yeah. oh good you got some locals there yeah i'll set these aside for you yeah they're the only real record store between uh nashville and yeah, memphis really. a lot of the memphis stores are uh, i hope hope they stay in business i hope, really hope to too. hit a few well cool 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 my lovely bride carrie rebel got herself a muddy waters 78 that's intact i found a really good memphis rocker it's got sax in it but it's killer i played this last week on my radio program oh that's on rocking 24 7 radio for those of you who don't know it's called in the groove got records you know i mean what else rockabilly blues hillbilly hillbilly bop bop and hillbilly hillbilly with a little bit of bop and hillbilly oh we're so a flutter right now we're in memphis and uh oh we're just a couple blocks away from Keep right on oh. Marshall Avenue. Okay. We're half a mile out from Sun Records. 706 Union. Wonder if that Arby's was there when Elvis was here. Wonder if that Walgreens was here and Johnny Cash was recording. Wonder if that Nissan and Kia were here. Huh. Cool, cool, cool. So up there is Barbara Pittman and then Sherry Crane. So good. She is still immortalized and remembered. So, as long as you cut on Sun, that's something to remember. Here we are in Sun Records. 706 Union, the proper studio. They have a really good tour. It's really kicked this game up. But anyway, enough talk, because you won't be able to hear me anyway. Hey, that was fun. They've really upped their game, and it's been 20 years since I've been to the Sun Studio as a tourist and uh, they've really got a good tour going i highly recommend it they've got a upstairs display with uh dewey phillips's whbq uh his sound booth and it's the real thing it's not a reproduction they literally have the real thing i like that tons of stuff and on the wall is one of my all-time ones the ripley cotton chopper 78. so if you go there and you see the three acetates directly under that i had those for about five or six months while i was making dubs that mr kirby the guitar player uh let me make and then i brought them back to him like i promised so we're going to keep looking around i think we're probably done for the evening but i found some records today and in the uh, motel room tonight i'll play you some of them y'all be real good or i'll get you well let's go back from whence we came chow chow to memphis going to come back pretty soon though hopefully stay about a week and just search try to turn up some of those missing records i need and we're fixed across Mississippi and go back into Arkansas. That's where my mama was born. She was a really born and bred Arkansas hillbilly. No indoor plumbing when she was a kid, lived on a little farm. And uh, just a bunch of cool, bizarre tobacco road type upbringing. So, uh, all right, we're in Arkansas now. Well, howdy folks, it's, uh, wow, it's been a good day. Here's what I've got today. I didn't buy a lot of records, but there's some cool stuff in here. This is in rough shape, but it plays great. Atom Bomb Baby by the Five Stars. I don't mind a record that's got a bit of wear. This is just weird. How to Write a Magazine, Alfred E. Newman. I, I think this is just, and then Richard and Me by Gene and Tommy. The thing is though, I think somebody just wrote the Alfred E. Newman reference on there for fun. That's good enough for me to buy it. And this is kind of neat. It's just a oddball country. I don't know what to call it. Kind of a bopper, but it's got some tasty guitar. Nom, nom, nom. You know, good old fashioned home cooked guitar like mommy used to make. And then, oddly enough, from my part of the country, Texas, we've got Spider Walk, which is a great instrumental, kind of garagey, got no love by the Salados. Then this is great. Carl McVoy, Little John's Gone. His first one for High Records, which was then subsequently released on a son, a Phillips International, sister label of Sun, was called Tootsie. 
And it was kind of a minor hit in the area. But his next one, which wasn't picked up by Sam Phillips, was a great rocker. I really like this. This thing goes pretty good. I, I'm happy. A really good uh, oddball thing. Laurel London, Don't Knock the Rock. It's just kind of odd. Then we've got a really good thing here. It's hard to read, but it's the... Well, it's Lee Red Melson. Yeah, Red Melson and the Missouri Nighthawks. And that's called uh, Sweethearts and So-Called Friends. Nice Missouri record, really. Well, Jake probably would like that. Then we're going to look here. We've got some sort of soul test pressing. That's not bad. I can't remember what the flip side is. It just says Teresa on it. You know, that's pretty decent. Then this is nice. The Tangle, which is garagey, doing anytime, anywhere. Plays great. This one I really like. It's Patsy Ann Henson. Uh, it's a girl rocker and uh, called Shorty. Man, that thing's hot. Now we've got some stuff here. This is neat. It's called What About Clement? Well, that caught my eye because I remember the Prisoners of Sun Records fame did a song called What About Clement? Frank Clement, he was a, a progressive uh, governor of Tennessee who had a lot of reform ideas and eventually pardoned the entire group. It was cut in 53 or so. This one is the same song, same group just about, but I think it was done after Johnny Bragg, if I, my ears serve me correctly, after he had been pardoned and left the group. Because it also mentions a verse in 1956, different incarnations of the Prisoners group apparently went on till probably about 60 or so, maybe after. But this is a neat 78. I've never heard this performance. And wow, it pleases me. And that's that's all I'm really after in, in all of this racket. This is Shake It Daddy, Bessie Jones with guitar accompaniment. Vocal blues, that's really nice. I ain't giving nobody nothing. Now that's got a crack in it. I don't care, I wanted it anyway. This is nice. Ma and Pa Poor House Blues. Ma Rainey and Papa Charlie Jackson. That's sharp. And big feeling blues. That gives me a big feeling anytime I run across the Paramounts. I paid real good for that one too. It, it sells well. But you know, it, it's, it's one of hers that I've heard that I really like. But here's something I really, really like. Bill Taylor and Smokey Joe with Clyde Leopard's Sneerly Ranch Boys, Split Personality, and Lonely Sweetheart. This one's in beautiful shape. It's a very rare 78. Flip was the sister label of Sun Records, if you remember. You better remember. There'll be a test on this later. I might stop you on the street and say, and then you're, you're going to be like, should have paid attention. It'll be too late at that point, won't it? Ah, Hank the Cowhand. Cowhand Stomp. You want to talk about disappointing, it's almost all uh, accordion, but not in a good Nathan Abshire way. It's just accordion. Flip side's much better, though, for me. Vocal by Hank the Cowhand. Ah, yeah. It's nice. West Virginia label. My Lovely Bride found this one today on the wall of a record shop. Mad Love but Muddy Waters. It's been played a lot, but it plays great. The thing is, though, for $2... I ain't passing up nothing, man. I'm going to buy that because that's what I do, right? I buy old records. Then this is just from not last night, but let's show it off. Wow. This is just marvelous. Troublesome Waters, son number 198 by the legendary Howard Surratt. I got a, I got a 45 of this last year, so... Whew. Now I've got another 78. From view, the harbor of if you turn it up really loud during the first chorus, at one point you hear the phone ring for half a ring. Right, let's see. Guiding my boat. 
right after this line. Nope, couldn't hear it over this little tinny speaker. But anyway, uh, I hope you like what I found. You be good, stay out of trouble, be excellent to each other. Uh, right if you get work, if you ever send anything, uh, uh, cans of meat and cigarettes, I can trade in, you know, to the other inmates. That helps a lot, saves me a lot of pain. Well, good morning to you, a and you too, most of y'all. Well, left out of Memphis quite some time ago. Just wanted to make time. I didn't want to get into an area I've been to a whole lot, you know, just looking up and down past the interstate. So what I've done is uh, bypass Little Rock altogether, and then I'm gonna jump off the beaten path. And right now I'm taking just some secondary type highways and uh, just gonna see what happens. After a bit, I think we'll just drop down into maybe Louisiana, uh, maybe the northern bit of that and just see what I can come up with. Ah. Just found a thrift store. About stopped at a few other places, but right now, being a Monday, there's just not anything open. Oh my, look at this. We've got lots of records. And when they're in that good shape, I just I start stacking them up. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I don't know that one. I'm just going to buy stuff. I don't know what I'm going to buy. Bet I'll pass something you want. I'm glad I came back here. I was about to pass this place up. Yeah, Jan and Dean, I'll get that for probably my friend uh, Dave in Canton. He likes picture sleeves. He'll want that too. Uh, easy beats. Don't know it. Oh, we'll look that up. Looking it up. If I can get a signal, I will look it up. I do not know it. A lot of 60s things here. I'm just holding hope out for some good uh, garage. That would be nice. Kind of a drag. Yeah, well, I found some stuff. I got a handful of 60s uh, 45s. They were cheap. Then I got this by the Animated Egg. I, I just bought that because it looks weird. Hopefully, somebody will like that enough to say, oh, Mac, I want that record. And then, you know, chances are when you see this, I won't have sold it because I, I normally just set LPs back and not worry about them. That's how weird I am. Another thrift shop. Another chance for stuff. And... I was told this place might have some records. Well, they do, but not my kind of records. Yeah, that's, that's one cheesy look, transformed. Yeah, uh-huh. He's keeping a secret or something in his life. It looks like, looks like he's got the Cheshire Cat grin going. Like, they're gonna buy my records, but I'm still gonna be bad. No, no, run away quickly, nothing there waste of my time so I'll come back sometime but anyway I've got to make it down the road I've got a couple hours tops looking but it's a Monday so that's kind of slow well all right 
been a been kind of a short day today with a whole lot of driving. Being a Monday, a lot of the places that I generally would like to find open, well, they might be open Saturday, so they take off Sunday and then Monday. So today wasn't a big record looking day. Just found a good handful of some 60s records. We're heading home, be home pretty soon, I do think. So yeah, we're less than an hour away. So I've had a really good trip out to Knoxville, Tennessee and back. I found a great load of records. Uh, got that Sun 204, 45, almost impossible to find. Real ones anyway, by uh, Raymond Hill. And then I've got, uh, looks like a Prisoner's Acetate, probably from about 1956 or 7, which is a remarkable find. Wasn't sure what it was when I got it. Got to the motel, played it, got to listening to it because I knew the previous version. Everything was, oof, I like. Got some great, great stuff. Paid really good for some things, you know. And then I bought some really great things, really on the cheap. A few mid-range items too. Pleases me in every, almost every way. Let, 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 let's don't get dirty minded here. You don't do that with records. You don't do that with records. I'll see you guys later. Y'all be good, be excellent to each other, yada, yada, yada. Kumbaya, we're happy. Bye. Well, howdy beauties. Uh, that's how most of y'all anyway. I'm just going through some of the stuff that I found that I really, really liked. First off, it's this one by The Midnighters. I need to get better organized with my hands here. Rock These Blues Away, featuring James Savage. Oh, he was so savage. That's a great one. I like that. I also like this one spinning here. The Townsell Sisters on Sky with the Jennings Brothers. They did one called Telephone Blues. Great record, great record. Just lots of neat stuff, really. Rocking, rolling, boping, bopping, strolling the Del Rios. That's a neat one autographed by one of the band members. This is a precious record here. It's made by the, the god of song poems. Rod Keith, that's with two Ds. Rod Double D Keith. Ecstasy to Frenzy. Rod was something, he seemed like kind of a frustrated, really great musician, made his own synthesizer type thingy where he could uh, work for the song poem industry, knock out, I don't know, six or 10 records, recordings anyway per hour, to, to, to grab that money, occasionally release some of his own songs like this one. And it all culminated in him uh, jumping off of an overpass in front of a speeding 18 wheeler, I think in uh, Los Angeles back in the seventies. Oh, well, nice, uh, really good, sarcastic, sleazy country from uh, Washington, Gary Williams, County Jail Blues. This is cool, the magic sounds. And that's just kind of good garage thingy. This one is great. A Louisiana uh, garage thing by the Bear Facts. Adamsville by Bill Privet. That's from 1968. It's about a bank robbery where the, all the bank robbers dress up as ladies. Still got caught. Because it's still illegal, you know, in Tennessee to rob a bank even if you're of the fair sex. Didn't mean to say sex on here. We don't get we we don't we don't do that. This one is another one of those song poem things. The Graveyard Rock, Nita and Bonnie. I haven't even played it, but it really looks good. Narvel Feltz. This is part of that uh, haul that I got, you know, where I was just buying records uh, from the the nice folks that had the Raymond Hill 45 that I drove out there to look at. Good double-sided bopper there, hyperkinetic, hillbilly instrumental, bunches of stuff. I'm, st I'm still going through things. I haven't even opened up my 78s yet, but I showed you some of those the other day. So I had a good time, a good and good family time. I tell you what, we had fun. We laughed a lot. Sometimes we laughed at the same time. That's important in a relationship, ain't it? So be good. I'm mobile again. It's something that, you know, I was looking at possible surgery for this uh, stupid knee. Maybe it didn't hear me say that. Was wearing a brace. Finally, I took the brace off after about four and a half, five days because it was just killing my leg. You know, braces digging into my tender flesh. Well, when I did, I realized I've got some range of motion and not much pain. So I walked on crutches for a few days. 
Then I realized I've had no pain for a few days and I've got nearly full range of motion. So I walked on one cane or one crutch for a while. Then the other day I've discarded the crutches. I feel good about that. Thanks for all the well wishes and uh, comments. I really appreciate that. Uh, Y'all stay healthy and be good. I'm going to play a bunch of records. Ha <laughs> ha!